This lesson plan, focusing on area and perimeter, introduces and helps students further their understanding of the concept using pentominoes. Maybe you heard of them, maybe you haven't, um, but let's look in front of me and quickly show what that looks like. So there's, they come in a set of 12. Why? Because they can be arranged in uh, multiple different sets of five. So notice that there's an overlap here, there's an overlap here, and they constantly move those same five squares around to make 12 different shapes. Furthermore, each one of these shapes have an area of five square units. So if you would take a ruler and you would measure each of one of these squares, they would each measure one inch by one inch. All right, so every square has an area of five and they come in a set of five. And they can be used for a variety of different educational purposes, but in this case, we're gonna be focusing on area and perimeter. Uh, the grades and activity we're gonna be focusing on for are grades three to five. So let's jump into day one and activity one next. For the introduction activity for day one, the first thing that you want to do with the students is do observations on the pentominoes. So if you look in front of me, if you're looking at the set of 12, you want them to kind of look at this and make some kind of general observations, something like, hey, I noticed that each of these have five squares or five square units. Uh, maybe they look like letters. This one looks like the letter Z. This looks like a P, an M, an L, an I. And after they are done making their observations, the next thing you want to do is hand out worksheet one. So let me pull these up in front of me so I can show you what they look like. So I have the answer key in front of me as well, but the first thing that they want the students to do is first define at the very top area and perimeter. Area being the space inside the figure, perimeter the distance around the outside edge of the figure. All right, so the, the make it easy, I usually start with the easiest pentominal, that's why it's listed first on the area key. So they usually grab the letter I, um, and the letter I has five square units, and so they're going to determine what the area is and what the perimeter is. So they're, they got grooves in there to make it very easy and convenient for them to determine what the, um, each, how many units there are. So they can either A, count the individual units inside there. There's one, two, three, four, five. They know that uh, width times length is uh, five times one is five. That's five square units. Um, and then if they have multiple shapes, they'll know that if they can count all of them up, that they can say, okay, there's three pentominoes, each have an area of five, three times five is 15 square units. So there's multiple ways to find the area, uh, but that's just one circumstance. So what they're gonna do, if you look down here in front of me again, they're gonna first draw the pentomino, each of these in the letter I. They're gonna say what the area is, it's five square units. You wanna emphasize the unit of measure for each perimeter and area, because otherwise what does five stand for or 12 stand for? Um, and then perimeter, in this case, this happens to be 12 square units. So if we count out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, we know that the perimeter is 12. So the I is done. Then the next one we're gonna do is the letter L. So again, determining the area, we know that there's five square units, so there's five. And then perimeter again, we count up, eventually we'll find that there is 12 units. After they've done the first letter I and letter L, the two easiest pentominoes, then I would work, let them work independently and just to see how they do. If you're in the classroom, you can certainly navigate around the classroom, see how the students are doing, help those that might need a little bit of assistance. Um, if you're working remotely, this is where you can do some breakout rooms and then kind of help them as well. Um, after they're finally done with all the different worksheets, um, at the very end, what you're gonna wanna do is kinda have some general observations. So there's a page two um, to the worksheet. If you look down here, it says, my pentomino observations. They're gonna just write two general observations that they know um, or observe uh, based on what they see. And then the first thing that you might uh, observe is that if we look at the answer key, all of the different pentominoes have five square units as the area. So that is maybe just one general observation. The second observation is that the letter P pentomino, that looks like the letter P, actually has a perimeter of 10 units. That's the only one that has a perimeter of 10 units, and that's because it has an adjoining side um, unlike the other pentominoes. Um, all the other pentominoes have a perimeter of 12. So that's what you would do at the very end of the day for day one um, after you're done with the activity is, hey, get some observations, let's recap what we observe. Um, and that would be the end of the introduction and activity for day one.
Next, we're gonna work into day two of the introduction and activity. For day two, the introduction and activity, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is recap what they've learned from day one. The three things are, one, the, all the pentominoes have an area of five square units. Two, the P pentomino has a perimeter of 10 units. And then three, the, all the other pentominoes have a perimeter of 12 units. After they've done a recap of that, the next thing they're going to be doing is worksheet two, and they're gonna be building rectangles. Uh, you're gonna notice that number one and two says draw your shape. So you're gonna do number one and two with the class. For number one, you're gonna give them these three pentominoes, and I use three different colors. Uh, because it's easier to see on screen. And I would also recommend this if you're going to be demonstrating to your students, if you can. Otherwise, you can certainly draw them and color them as, as needed as well. I wouldn't hand them out in this specific order just because then it's very easy visibly to show that how you can build that rectangle. But that's just something that I wanted to do for you to make it um, as an example as you're teaching. So after they draw their uh, rectangle and they build their solution, the next thing they're going to be doing is the area and perimeter. So you want to, again, emphasize what is area, what is perimeter, and walk them through that. Um, again, for, er for area, there's three different ways that they can do this. They can count up every single square within the pentomino. They can multiply the width times the length, or they know that there's three pentominoes, um, that each area has five. They can do three times five. Uh, that equals 15 square units. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is write down the 15 square units for the area. Then you're gonna review again what is the perimeter. It's the area of the outside all at the amount of area on the outside of the figure. So I, to introduce the students, like to go top, right, bottom, left, and you can do it however you would like, but essentially you're gonna know that the top has five, the right has three, the bottom has five, and the left has three. And then I just wrote up the equation right here too, that five plus three plus five plus three equals 16 units. And that would be the perimeter. And you can choose however method that you wanna do, but I would recommend that the students write out their work so you can see and then explain how did they come to that answer. And you can call in a couple students um, to say, who did you come up with the solution? What was the area? What was the perimeter? After they're done with number one, they're gonna be doing number two. So then you're gonna give them four different pentominoes. These are the four that you're gonna be using. And again, I use different colors to be able to demonstrate easily what it looks like. And I wouldn't hand it to them in this order. I just did this to make it very easy and convenient for you to be able to see the solution. So that is the solution there um, for this next one. And again, you're doing this together. So then after you give them the pentominoes, you want them to draw right here their final solution. They're gonna figure out what the area is uh, it could be, this one happens to be 20 square units and the perimeter happens to be 18 units and it's written at the top and out as well. So they can show their work as well. Um, but then what you can do to kind of enhance that activity is you can give them a one minute challenge. Um, if you have some students that are a little bit more advanced or wanna make it kind of like a competition to see who can come up with it or not. Um, so there's a little bit of a time limit that you can do. Um, and then, the last thing that you wanna do after you're all said and done is do the rest of the worksheet two. Um, and then if you look at this, you'll notice that the, there's a little bit of a change of pace uh, on the worksheet two, especially on the problems three and four. On problem three, they actually show the five different pentominoes that you have, and then you have to make your rectangle and then determine your area perimeter. And number four, they give you the area of the shape that you need. So you can create whatever type of rectangle that you need to be able that equals 20 square units. And then the perimeter, since it's not written, can be um, whatever it equals to using those different pentominoes. So they can use, so they know based on this that if it's 20 square units, that they are working with four pentominoes. And they'll pick that up pretty easily as they start working towards that, um, just because you know each shape has five square units. All right, after you're all said and done, at the very end, there's a little challenge. You can use that as like an extra activity. Um, so for those that have completed early, or you can use that as a, a challenge that you can take home with. 
Um, what's really nice about this activity too is that you can do it remotely or in person depending on the situation, um, drawing this, these shapes up and working with uh, their students. And that concludes uh, the day two's introduction and activity. As you can see, pentominoes can be used for a variety of different educational purposes. In this case, we used it for measurement. You can also use it for rotational or line symmetry and as well as tessellations activities. Uh, we love your feedback, so make sure to reach out to us and give us any kind of input that you have about this lesson or other resources that you may watch.